I'm going on the train again and thought, since I'm on the move, I could code something to do with location. And I did. I made the Google Maps clone from scratch using just HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and some map images I found online. Now, Google Maps clone is kind of a clickbaity title. It has only basic features like showing your location and using different layers, but I couldn't think of a better name. If you can, comment below and I'll change the title. So before I started coding, I looked for icky rectangular maps online. More on that later. But I searched for these at the start while I still had good internet connection. I found several good ones and added them in a separate folder. Then I began to write basic HTML, gave the page a title and loaded one of the images on the page to see if it works. And it did. Now I thought a bit, should I use a canvas element for this one? Because all I really wanted was to put a marker over the map at the right place. And that can easily be done without a canvas. But I decided to use it anyway, in case I'll update it someday to have things like animations, panning, zooming, like the chart in that advanced tutorial I made a while ago. Now, in the script tag, I got access to the drawing context and initialized the image like so. After it loads, I add it to the canvas. Now, the canvas has a default size, so it looks quite small. I typically make the canvas fit my screen when prototyping, like so. But now, the map stretches and I don't want that. I debugged how to get the image properties and used them to compute the aspect ratio. Then I used it to set the canvas height accordingly. Good. Move the developer tools at the bottom so I have more space horizontally like so, and align things to center and try to see how the other map images look like. Everything seemed fine. So I moved on to work with coordinates and started with 0, 0. So I draw a red dot at that location. Now the latitude and longitude are polar coordinates, so using them here in this Cartesian space will not work. But the math isn't that hard to figure out. You'll see. Zero, zero should be here. I started by getting the center of the canvas and just moving the dot there. I styled it a bit differently so it's more visible and thought a bit about the unit. Like what are the units on this map? I thought 20 degrees, but after counting and doing some basic math or uh, having Copilot do it for me, I realized the cell length must be 15. And after some more super advanced math, I realized the map shows all 90 degrees of latitude. Sometimes maps only focus on the midsection because weird stretching happens at the extremities. Now with that in mind, I calculated the Cartesian coordinates relative to the center of the canvas like this. I used the canvas dimensions to scale the percentages. Those values are doubled because relative to 0, 0, we have half the canvas size in every direction. After fixing this variable name, the dot is still at 0, 0. But if changing the longitude to 15, it moves one unit to the right. And we can go on until 180 degrees. Now, if you look closely, this doesn't align well here, because the map has a small white margin around it. We can account for it like so. I just do trial and error, and it looks good. Same thing vertically, and okay, we can now show coordinates on a map. Let's test with some more real coordinates. I think Romania is somewhere here. Let's try a bit to the left. Okay, good. And Finland is just above same longitude. Now to find our location, I'm going to use the code from my tutorial where I teach you how to calculate distances using GPS. It's not a huge code base. I'll just take this part from here and add it in a new file. I called it GPS, but really location comes from many different sensors on your device. And my laptop here doesn't even have GPS. So not a good name especially because GPS isn't even the only satellite positioning system. But anyway, using the geolocation API, I logged into the console the location whenever it updates. The geolocation has to change here, so switching to let instead will make this work. I think this is some location in Helsinki, coming from some IP I'm getting from the train Wi-Fi. So not my real location, but I should be able to get a better one on my phone later. Now, I wanted to refactor the code and take out this remapping function and set some global variables for map properties. 
With the new structure, I also made a function to draw the dot. This one generates the coordinates for the map and puts a dot at that location. I call it in the beginning and when location changes, and it seems to work. The images I used are quite high resolution, so I could use a larger canvas, like so, and better inspect where the dot is. I searched the coordinates using Google Maps, and things seemed to be as expected. I tried putting the app on my website and loading it on my phone, but I didn't seem to have internet at the moment. Probably because I'm in the middle of nowhere. So I used the developer tools to change the location in different cities, and everything looked as expected. Nice. The only difference is that Google Maps applies a different projection for the map. Oh, uh, right, it updated a while ago to use a globe instead, like Google Earth. Well, I already have a video where I taught how to make a Google Earth clone using 3.js, so I won't get into that because basically every other major map service provider defaults to the Mercator projection. You see, we use the equirectangular projection at first because it's easiest to work with. The polar coordinates get mapped to an even grid. The Mercator projection, however, distorts the map even more, like you see here. There's stretching happening vertically as well. All projections have pros and cons, but because many people are accustomed to this one, I took few map images like this and decided to support it as well. So how does it work? I found this explainer online. The coordinates are projected on the cylinder, meaning we need to figure out the relationship between the latitude angle and this distance right here. Now, we could find out how to do it by reading this Wikipedia page, but it looked quite scary. Often there's too much information there, and I thought I could figure out the relationship myself. Because if we know the radius of the sphere according to the size of the map, which we can get by dividing the width by 2 pi, then the tangent of the latitude should be this value divided by the radius. Now, I coded this keeping in mind that the tangent function works with radians here, so I had to convert it, and it didn't work. The longitude was okay since it's the same as in the equirectangular projection, but I just couldn't get things to work vertically. It wasn't aligning with the lines as expected. This should be at the 60 degree latitude line, for example. I thought there might be some error estimating the radius or something. I spent a lot of time trying to fix until eventually I gave up and asked ChatGPT. And it immediately gave me a working solution. I don't know exactly why it works, and I didn't have time to read the whole Wikipedia page to find out, but I did find ChatGPT's formula here as well, so I'm quite sure it's good. I think the diagram from before was misleading and that the Mercator scales things a bit differently. So these maps are not generated using this exact technique, and that's why things didn't align as expected. Anyway, I decided to allow users to change the maps, so I made a function that remaps depending on the projection, and added a drop-down to select the map they want. Moved the styles to a separate file and made it so the last known location is redrawn on top of the map every time a new one is selected. I also added a field for the coordinates to make debugging easier. Everything worked well and eventually internet appeared on my phone and I could load the page. The coordinates are a bit better, but not fantastic. I think satellite signal doesn't pass through this train. So it might be using cell tower positioning, but if you test it outside, it should work quite well. Let me know if you tried it and if you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and see you guys.